Hi. Welcome to Unnatural Deaths. Where we explore the unnatural deaths of everyday people, like you and me. This is the disappearance of Jeanette Tate. Jeanette Tate, was born in Taunton, Somerset on 5 May 1965. To parents John and Sheila Tate. They had moved to Cornwall, finally ending up in Devon. She attended Exmouth Comprehensive School. About 16 kilometers from her home. Devon is a small village. It's a quiet and safe place to live. People living there are mainly farming families, to the retired. It is said that you could drive through the entire village in about half a minute. There's only one lane leading off the main road, called Within Lane. On Within Lane, about 100 meters from the center of Aylesbury, was the spot Jeanette was taken. Jeanette's parents had separated. Father soon got remarried. She moved in with her dad, stepmom, Violet, and stepsister, Tanya. Even though Jeanette was living with her dad, she was in regular contact with her mom. Disappearance August 19, 1978 Jeanette's dad had left that morning, taking his wife, Violet, to work, in Exeter. At about 10 that morning, he was back home preparing breakfast for Jeanette and Tanya. Tanya was preparing to spend some time with her dad, in Cornwall. John Tate was about to drop Tanya and her partner in Exeter, to catch the bus. Before leaving he asked Jeanette if she'd like to come with them. She refused, opting to stay alone. At about 2 p.m., Jeanette was out delivering newspapers. It would have been her last delivery. She was only filling in for the boy who usually does the deliveries. He was lucky enough to be on holiday. After completing some of her deliveries, she bumps into her friends, Margaret Hebe, and Tracy Pratt. Jeanette, now pushing her bike, walks with her friends up the slope. Once Jeanette got to the top, she hopped on her bike, and continued ahead. Moments later, the two girls seize Jeanette's bicycle in the middle of the street, with the undelivered newspapers scattered all over. But Jeanette was nowhere to be seen. They called out for her, but no response. The girls, confused, decides to walk her bike to her home. When they got to her place, John and Violet Tate, had just pulled in. The girls explained what had happened. Janet's dad and stepmom, with the help of friends, and neighbors, proceeded with their search for Jeanette. After searching for an hour, and as it was getting dark, John Tate reported his daughter missing. The quiet town roared into life after the authorities were informed. There were more than 70 uniformed officers and over 50 detectives working the case. Lakes and ponds would be searched by underwater units, and sniffer dogs the terrain. It was soon ruled out that Jeanette had run away, as she left all her belongings, including money she'd been saving. Even the money that she had collected from the newspaper sales was still in her purse, that was found on her bicycle. She only had what she'd been wearing at the time. A white t-shirt, with her name in red embroidery on the left shoulder. Brown pants, and white plimsolls. A hit and run was also ruled out, as the bike wasn't damaged, and there was no tire marks near where the bike was found.
leaving kidnapping as the only plausible motive for her disappearance. But that was also ruled out by both the police and Janet's family. A maroon sedan was seen around the time of Janet's disappearance. This is thanks to eyewitness reports. Despite thousands of volunteers, Janet's disappearance still can't be explained. On the 25th anniversary of Janet's disappearance, John and Sheila both said that they believed Janet was no longer alive. The police had a suspect on their radar, Robert Black. He was convicted for abduction and murdering of young girls. Black was a long-distance delivery driver, back in the 70s. Some of his deliveries would bring him into the Exeter area.